over 250 million years ago, when the world was covered in primeval forests, the cockroach had reached a stage of development which has enabled it to survive almost unchanged up to the present day. The prehistoric monsters, unable to adapt themselves to changing conditions, died out. But the cockroaches, scavengers of the earth, continued to flourish. Fossil remains found in carboniferous deposits laid down at that time clearly show that in almost every detail the insects are identical to those which are a major pest of the food industry. and like the rats of the Middle Ages, they accompanied the early traders on sea voyages to all parts of the world. Even today, they remain one of the most common insect pests of ships. As commerce expanded, so cockroaches invaded new areas and colonized new lands. In cold countries, they have established themselves indoors in the attractive microclimates modern man has created for his own convenience. The heat of bakeries, the humid atmosphere of kitchens, and the warmth of modern homes. The life cycle of all species of Orthoptera follows a similar pattern, and mating takes place in the early days of adult life. Subsequently, the young cockroaches develop in an egg case, which gradually enlarges, and is to be seen protruding prominently from the female as she walks about. Eventually, she searches for a warm spot in which to deposit the case, preferably near a food supply. The dark brown egg case of the oriental cockroach looks rather like a small dried bean. The egg case of the German cockroach is lighter in color and of a different shape. In each egg case, there are from 16 to 32 cockroaches, which develop from small eggs to tiny insects known as pronymphs. Unlike the oriental species, the female German cockroach carries the egg case attached to the body until just before hatching. At this stage, the case splits lengthwise and the pronymphs emerge as small, white, soft and rather feeble insects. Soon they are able to forage for food and run around rapidly. These young insects continue to grow by means of a series of molts. The hard outer skin splits and the insect slowly wriggles free of the old shell. The soft white inner skin expands and hardens to form a new shell. The wings are small and crumpled at first, then are blown out to their new size. A 
On exposure to light, the cuticle gradually changes to dark brown. This process of metamorphosis continues for two to 12 months, at the end of which time the insects are adults and the life cycle starts once more. Immediately after molts, cockroaches are weak and particularly vulnerable to attack by their fellows who seize the opportunity to indulge in cannibalism. The two species most commonly found in the United Kingdom are Blatter orientalis, the common cockroach, and Blatella germanica, the steam fly. This is Periplaneta americana, the species most frequently found in ships. Sewers provide ideal conditions of warmth and moisture for the development of large-scale infestations and serve as highways for the migration of adults from place to place. It is not surprising, therefore, that cockroaches spread filth and disease. gives to infested premises a particularly objectionable but characteristic odour which is persistent and can be detected in bread made from infested flour. favorable conditions, the nymphs will hatch and establish themselves, however clean the premises may be. Control measures have been practiced for hundreds of years. These included trapping devices and the laying of poison baits. But such measures were never completely successful because they relied for their effectiveness on each cockroach coming to the trap or bait. It was not until 1940 that the production of the chlorinated hydrocarbon compounds, such as DDT, produced a solution to this problem. These insecticides were found to be lethal to cockroaches. Furthermore, they retained their properties for many months and treated surfaces remained toxic to insects.
for the first time, it was possible to take a long-lasting insecticide right into the hiding place of the insects. Thus, whole colonies could be exterminated, provided always that every insect was susceptible to the insecticide. The success of these chemicals is due in part to the fact that the cockroach spends much of its time cleaning itself. The insecticide adheres readily to the spines on the legs and to the antennae, and in the process of grooming, particles of insecticide are transferred to the alimentary canal. Insecticidal materials with fumigant properties are readily absorbed by the respiratory system of the insect. Modern insecticides are therefore able to attack cockroaches in many different ways. Unfortunately, species of cockroach are now being encountered which are resistant to the chlorinated hydrocarbons and it has been necessary to change to organophosphorus compounds to obtain control. Our ancient enemy, the cockroach, is fighting back against the onslaught being made by the scientist. The insect, which has withstood changing world conditions for 250 million years, is again adapting itself to ensure the survival of the species. So along with this search for new materials, goes a constant search for new methods of applying them. And of these, the insecticidal lacquers are unique. These form a hard transparent film on treated surfaces. When an insect walks over treated areas, crystals appear and adhere to the insect's legs. These insecticides are absorbed through the cuticle or ingested in the process of cleaning. Applied by experts in the correct places, these lacquers retain their insecticidal properties for many months and provide an additional weapon in the constant fight against cockroaches. At present, man has the technical knowledge, the equipment and the skill to control cockroach infestations. The new insecticides have, for the time being, enabled man to gain the ascendancy over his old enemy. But how long will it be before the organophosphorus materials prove ineffective against new generations of cockroaches? To protect mankind against these filthy disease-spreading intruders, research for new effective methods of control must go on continually, for a creature which has survived for so long will not easily give up the struggle.